And the Oscar goes to Daniel Day-Lewis. History was made at the Oscars last night. Daniel Day-Lewis became the first man to win the Best Actor Award three times. He played the lead role in Lincoln and paid tribute to his wife for enduring his intense preparation. He stays in character even while at home. Well, since we got married 16 years ago, um, my wife Rebecca has lived with some very strange men. Um, <laughs> luckily, she's the versatile one in the family and she's been the perfect companion to all of them. Jennifer Lawrence won Best Actress for Silver Linings Playbook. And three Canadians took home Oscars. Michael Dana won Best Musical Score for Life of Pi. And Guillaume Rocheron won Best Visual Effects for the same movie. Set decorator Jim Erickson won for Lincoln. Canada also got a shout out from Ben Affleck last night. It was brief, but it was there. And for people who felt Affleck's movie Argo did Canadians a great injustice, it was at least small consolation. Robin Gill reports. Obama, do you have your envelope? The big moment was unusual and unprecedented. U.S. First Lady Michelle Obama made the announcement from the White House. And the Oscar goes to Argo. And in a whirlwind speech, director Ben Affleck gave a shout out up north. I want to thank Canada. We're the last three prime ministers of Canada. Argo tells the story of how six American diplomats escaped Iran during the 1979 hostage crisis by pretending to be a Canadian film crew. Where are they? The Canadian ambassador's house. At the time, Canada's ambassador took grave personal risk to hide them. Where were we born? Toronto. Toronto. Canadians don't pronounce the T. But the film downplayed that risk and Canada's role in getting them out. Today, the diplomat is basking in the Oscar spotlight and again making sure the real story isn't lost. This was a cooperative, uh, really a cooperative initiative between Canada and the U.S., with Canada not only initiating it, sustaining it, but in the final days executing it jointly with the CIA. The Oscar win for Argo is once again highlighting how history can be rewritten by Hollywood and why it's important to set the record straight. I think what this reflects, this movie, and this is my own reflection, is that's the nature of Canada abroad. We're players. We're serious players. And Taylor's version of the events in Iran is being backed up by someone who knows a thing or two about what happened. Jimmy Carter was president during the event, and even he admits the film, although entertaining, Canada's role was much bigger. Ninety percent of the contributions to the ideas and the consummation of the plan was Canadian. But at the end of the day, folks, this is a movie. It's based on a true story. And what that means in Hollywood means there was a country called Iran and there's a country called Canada. That's all they need to do for based on a true story. As for Iran, where the film isn't being shown in theaters, only via bootleg DVDs, the government called it pro-CIA and anti-Iran propaganda. I want to thank our, our, our friends in, uh, in Iran. It appears there's a third side to this story of intrigue. Robin Gill, Global News, Vancouver.